Hey there everybody, welcome back to Samuel Plays Brass with your host Sam. Today I've got a very interesting item for show and tell. This is a Vincent Bach Stradivarius 43 B-flat trumpet, but not just any Model 43. No, this trumpet commemorates the 25th anniversary of the merger between Vincent Bach and the console company. So if this sounds like your type of video, make sure to stick around to learn more. Before we dig our heels into today's review, and believe me, it's an interesting one, you won't want to miss it, I'd like to take a second and say that according to YouTube statistics, depending on the month, only about 1 in every 10 to 15 people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel here. If you're new around here or haven't subscribed thus far, consider doing so. It's a small gesture on your part that really helps me out and keeps me making this type of content for you. So without further ado, let's get on with the Vincent Bach 25th Anniversary Model 43. As far as trumpet makers go, the Vincent Bach company is pretty traditionalist. They've found models and designs that have worked and have stuck with them for many, many decades. So seeing an instrument with a few different modifications like this one is really a treat. This is a pretty special Bach. You can see it's got some gold trim on the bottom valve caps, top valve caps, water keys. There actually happens to be a water key on the third slide, unlike many Bachs. And the stop rail on the third valve slide. That's also gold trim there. So very interesting horn uh, on the bell. We have a little bit more engraving than usual, as well as this medallion. I will try and get a picture of that for a more enhanced view, but that's a really cool touch in any case. You can see it's a 43 with a reverse lead pipe there. It's got the standard dump slide configuration on the third valve slide, even though it has a water key. Uh, I think it might be a little overkill, but I do like having that dump slide there just in case. This first valve saddle is actually an aftermarket addition. It must have been just a conventional saddle before, but you can see some uh, evidence of desoldering and resoldering there. Uh, it's a little bit far from the valve casing for my thumb, personally, because I have very small hands, but, you know, that's something you can live with. It's a really cool horn in any case. It's got some unique design features that I thought I'd go over. As mentioned, this is the product of 25 years of Vincent Bach working with Con Selmer. That factoid was brought to you by today's historian of the day, Dave Miller. You can find him on YouTube at Dave's Trumpet. A lot of fun stuff on there. He's been an extremely long-time internet friend of mine. Uh, he was there right at the inception of the Samuel Plays Brass channel, and we've made friends on Facebook, where he gave me all the information for this video. And you may notice this is my second time filming the informational segments of this video. You'll notice a different set of attire in the playing excerpts. Uh, that is because I was wildly off in my research the first time around, so I'd like to take a moment to thank Dave for setting me on the right track and keeping me from releasing a terribly misinformed video. So as mentioned, 25 years of Bach working with Con Selmer. Uh, there were about 1,200 of these made beginning in 1986, according to Dave. And what I've got here is in the 900s in terms of serial numbers. So on the later side, uh, it wasn't exactly the first one made, but there were only ever 1,200 to speak of, so that's pretty unique in any case. A couple of tidbits about this horn's playability. You'll notice on the valve casing it's marked ML for the typical medium-large bore, and we come to expect this with most Bach trumpets with a bore in the range of 459, a thousandths of an inch, or a .459 bore. This is actually a little bit smaller. If you're trying to take a modern Bach 37, for instance, second slide and fit it into that gap, the tubes would actually be a little bit too wide on the modern slide. Meaning this trumpet probably has a bore somewhere in the range of 456 to 457, rather than the conventional 459 we know today. So it's a little bit on the smaller side, but it's still got a very, very beefy sound. This is a free-blowing horn compared to a lot of box. It's partially because of the reverse lead pipe design. It's also partially because of the heaviness of these bottom caps, and there are a couple other factors that go into it, but it plays very uniquely for a Bach. It's got a wide spectrum of tonal colors that you really don't come to expect when you first pick it up, but it's very, very surprising. As far as an orchestral horn, it does very well. I'm surprised, honestly, with the reverse lead pipe setup and everything, but it does just fine there. You'll hear that demonstrated.
but I think the best use of this trumpet is in the commercial sphere. First of all, it's a real screamer. The high notes are very open, they lock in very well, no matter the register you're playing in, and it is, it is pretty incredible up there, but honestly, just the sound you get in terms of that commercial sphere, it's really something unique, especially for Bach trumpets. I've never played a Bach commercial model, but this is the closest thing I've played so far. As I mentioned, the board is a little bit smaller and the low notes get a little bit funky for me. They have a nice big vibrant sound, but it does feel a little bit tougher to reach than on a standard Bach 37. So bear that in mind, I think the board just is a little bit smaller. Um, I think the, the test where the second slide from a new Bach doesn't fit into this one is pretty conclusive, more so than any stamping like ML on the valve casing. I think the board just has to be a few thousandths of an inch smaller. So. As I mentioned, keep that in mind, but it still is a really fun and unique horn as far as box go. Historically, Vincent Bach's trumpets fill one role extremely well. That's Bach's niche in the trumpet world, and there's a reason that after decades, no matter what modifications they release, the stock Bach 37 is still very much the classical industry standard here in America. It's a very popular choice, and for good reason. So it's interesting, on the other side of the coin, to see a Bach trumpet that actually does a very good job of playing different styles and putting on different hats. It's a little bit harder to control as a result. I think a lot of people like the sort of stylistic straight jacket that a box strad puts on their playing. That's not necessarily a diss. It's actually very helpful in some circumstances in getting that orchestral sound that you want. But this horn ends up kind of giving you the reins a little bit and doesn't really direct you anywhere in particular until you supply it with your own input. So that's very interesting. It's very unlike most box. And even compared to my Yamaha shoehorn, this feels like quite a wild horse. I sit on it and it bucks around until I decide where I want it to go. So in conclusion, the 25th anniversary Bach 43 is a really, really cool horn. It allows the player a lot more freedom, which isn't always the best thing, so it ends up being quite a high octane horn. But if you can handle that in your playing and you can supply this wild bucking racehorse with the decisiveness it needs, then it can really, really reward you. This is a super cool horn. It's not mine, I'm just borrowing it, but I've really enjoyed doing this review, playing it, and discussing it, and honestly just looking at it. I mean, it's a really, really interesting specimen. So I hope you've enjoyed this review as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you've liked it and you've stuck around this far, make sure to leave a like and a comment on the video. Again, that really helps out and it's a small gesture. If you want to check out more instrument reviews, my instrument review playlist will be linked as a card in the top right corner. Thanks again so much for watching this review of the 25th anniversary Bach 43. And until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.